So yeah, it's like a year ago since I made like a video like this, you remember? It wasn't about this time, it was more after Christmas, but it's before Christmas now, so... So for one year ago I took the exam in VHL, Advanced uh, Digital System Construction, not Advanced, and then after that I started on Advanced Digital Systems, where I talked about here in the woods. <laughs> This uh, wireless tree and all of that stuff it was really fun. And uh, now I can say that uh, the reason why I haven't been so active lately is because uh, when I took that course, <laughs> I met a guy there. And uh, just kidding. <laughs> and then talked with him in the lab and then after half a year or so he contacted me so I'm working in the same company as him taking over for him it's embedded software design I'll talk for that. I'm programming on a uh, embedded system an uh, IoT thing Internet of Things so yeah that's why I haven't been so busy lately because it's really hard so I understand probably many of you are a bit disappointed by this, but uh, it's for the better. Uh, I haven't had work for like... I had work, but not the real engineering stuff. Whatever that means. <laughs> so, for like eight years or something. So that's why I started YouTube to start doing uh, technical stuff. So. And I went back to the university, started taking courses, started working there actually. It's very icy here, so, <laughs> so it's a bit scary. Yeah, so I'll have to be quick, uh, because this is the same shitty phone I had yet last year. Yeah, that was harsh, so one hurdle overcome. <laughs> So one thing I've been missing a lot from my videos now is to work on is the video pack SD card. So that was this is the video is about, and uh, I made a blog uh, posting about this because I I didn't want to forget the three things or the three ways which is possible to do this. By the way, the water is out there, so I'm gonna try this uh, a little bit unconventional way of doing it uh, usually those unconventional ways doesn't work but uh, what I'm going to do is I have a, uh, I'm going to give the finger to say all of these uh, bus transaction things or bus transceiver things I'm going to take them all away uh, how am I going to do that? Well. Uh, the thing with the video pack is that reading from program memory or ROM and reading from RAM and writing from RAM are three separate things. And that means uh, we don't have to actually have transceivers for that. So we can just connect everything to the bus and then we have another problem. We can't have the Arduino control the data bus to the to the video pack. So how am I going to do that? Buffering. So I was looking at buffers and oh my god, so so hard. But what I ended up with <laughs> was just a simple on-off switch on the buffer. So basically when there comes a read from the CPU, it just puts the data from the Arduino out on the bus. So it basically strobes it. Strobing, that's the terminology. So, yeah. That's really cool. So, and then I figured out, okay, wow, uh, I'm missing something here. It looks so very clean. Yeah, I was missing, um, what was I missing again? Yeah, I was missing the room. So I had attached the RAM, but not the room, because we need the computers will start up in the room and then after the programming it uh, goes into RAM so it, the RAM switches from RAM to room sort of uh, as if you are using it uh, only for reading 
So, but you can't shift it while the computer is running in it because then it crashes. So, the other idea, which I'm not testing now, is that uh, we have only RAM. For that to work, we need to make the changes while we hold the reset buttons. It's a bit risky, but uh, the Arduino can sense that you hold the reset button and then you switch the image in the RAM to between menu and program. Actually, bringing it back to the menu. So when you release it, it boots in, uh, straight into the menu. And then when you select the program, the program jumps back into the internal room of the video pack. And the cool thing about that is that when it's in the internal, it's not accessing anything on the data bus outside the microchip. So that means that we can do all changes while you're in select game mode. Because then the CPU is running code inside the chip itself. Which is pretty cool, I think. So that's the idea. So when you do a select a game from the menu, it jumps into select game so the user has time to press one of the switches. And then while that's happening, in the background, we change the image. So, so when the game is pressed, uh, it jumps, jumps into the routine which selects the game. I'm not completely sure if that works or not, but uh, I'm hoping for the better. But this is not how I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to have a separate room and a separate RAM, so it's not a big deal. So basically, when uh, it will uh, look a lot the same as the the RAM cart from uh, I have forgotten his name. It's too long ago. Uh, so it will get one byte at a time from the Arduino and then put it into RAM. And it will do that. And the good thing about that, you don't need address pins on the Arduino. Just increment, uh, just fetch byte per byte, and then put it back into the uh, the buffer, and then let the CPU fetch it out, then write it back into the RAM. So <laughs> that's what I said in the very beginning. This is really cool. There's three things that the CPU accesses outside itself in the external. is RAM, room, and then the third part is uh, that the RAM, okay, once again, the three things, it's room, so that's external memory, where the program is running, and then there's two in RAM, one for write and one for read. So that will be three separate devices. You will have one room and one RAM and one buffer. And the buffer is then connected to the read stroke. So, so it reads from buffer and then it puts its back into RAM by right strobe. So I think that's pretty nice. So we don't have to have all those transceivers. But then comes the question, do we need a lot of uh, control circuitry? Actually, I don't think so, because it's already in the uh, in the VDPAC mainboard itself. So, yeah, so sorry for all the sniffling. I think that was all I was going to say. There's the water, by the way. This is where I was last time when you saw me making that amp video pack. No, <laughs> amp switch automatic for my dad. <clears throat> so this is the scenario I was talking about. In menu mode, when this one is running in the menu mode. So we have the menu in here actually. Menu. Menu program. And uh, then we have like a multiplexer or something here, which controls how these behave. Because in one way we want this one on in menu, and when it's in game, we want this um, chip select signal to go to to RAM instead. So anyway, so when you are in menu and you select a game. Uh, we start reading data here. 
data comes in here, stops there. So that will be the first byte we read. So this is similar to the RAM card, except when you have the RAM card, you are only reading one bit at a time. Here we read one byte at a time. So the video pack is ready to read it. So it reaches a part of the program uh, where it uh, asks for data from memory. But remember, this read line is now connected to the buffer, not the RAM. So, uh, so when it reads, uh, then puts data out on the bus. So, and that's uh, that means that the Arduino Arduino must put the data on the buffer first and hold it, and then uh, when the read stroke comes, it will briefly put it out on the bus until the read stroke goes off again. Right, so when it's on the bus, it then can pass all the way down here. So, and then, this one is turned off. Uh, what happens then? Well, the next, next instruction here is to put it back into the RAM. So it takes the same data, puts it out on the... Uh, I don't know if I have other colors. Mm. Let's see. Let's try red. So, puts the same dat data out on the bus again, and then it uh, pulls on the right strobe, and it ends up here. So yeah, so that's the sequence. It also has to set the correct uh, address. So, but that's a part of the program anyway. So. Yeah, so I think this will be much faster than serial because <laughs> now it's uh, okay. It's serial here, but it's really high speed, and now we fetch a byte at a time. Also, we need some uh, handshaking, shaking, and the way I want to do that is to use some uh, some lines, which are coming from the video back. Um, remember exactly now but we'll look at the schematic so yeah so that's uh, how I think it will work so when it's finished doing all this and then and its um, memory has been filled uh, yeah so when it's finished with that the program here jumps to the internal memory which is inside here on chip and therefore this bus is free so that's great and the thing we can do now, when uh, we are waiting for the users to press uh, select game, uh, that's uh, you press either enter zero, one to nine, or something like that. This one is free, so the program won't crash when we do something. So <coughs> I don't have a proper m microphone for my computer, so I will film the screen. I'll try and hold the camera as still as possible. So yeah. Power supply. We need that for the uh, SD card, 3.3 .3 volt. Mm. The Arduino is going to be removed. It's basically just a header for the Arduino Mini, but I'm just using it for reference, so we'll remove that. This is at Mega 128, and uh, as you can see, it's way bigger than I need. So, because I was thinking, I think address bus. It takes up uh, like 13 pins or something. And then control pins are up in uh, 20 or something. And then you have data, so you have a, you need a lot of pins. But as you can see, this is the edge connector. So yeah, this one you can use for uh, handshaking. 
I haven't con connected all the control signals, but this one is for requesting data from the uh, con from the room. It's actually instructions. And you have uh, address and data. So basically, this is the address bus. And in this is KiCad, by the way. KiCad. So. Uh, buses doesn't have any meaning in uh, actual meaning it's just uh, a drawing so what has what is important is that the names on the individual nets are the same if they are the same they are connected so this is just for show but it, I like having like a that it shows it's a bus so so this is another bus this is the data bus B0 to B7. This is a RAM chip. And over here you have the buffer. The 8 bit buffer. Now we are going to con connect that to chip select, probably. So there's two of them, so you have to figure out how that works. Maybe I need another buffer such that I can use two ship selects and this one is a special and you, you can switch only these two four or only these four or both of them individually but it doesn't have a, a two chip select function so we need that because inside the video pack hold on video pack schematic schematic Schemask, schematic, anyway. <laughs> What's more annoying than uh, a schematic divided in two JPEGs? So I have connected them together like this. So, where is the read line? Here's the read line. It comes over there. And it goes in there. And it also goes up here. And you can see it branches off here into number three and it goes up to this ship select. Now you can say the same about this ship select also. So this is the read stroke, ship select inverse and the uh, ship select not inverted if I can call it that is just for selecting the RAM inside the ca game cartridge if that exists anyway, but we are going to have that anyway. And you can see this one is number five, you see also number three. Mm -hmm. and let's look at it. You can see that it comes in here also, but here it's uh, negated, and over here it's not negated. So the difference is that when this one is high, that means that the game cartridge is selected. When it's low, the RAM is selected. So, so, so we need some logic to use this one. So I have to figure out that. Um, 